I'm teaching today on praying in the spirit. This is part one of praying in the spirit. Or some people would say praying with the spirit. It is a phrase that uh, many of us may be familiar with. Uh, uh, normally people associate it with praying in tongues. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about that for this week and next week and explain some things from the scripture and also get us into prayer uh, in a certain direction. So I'm going to focus much of what I teach today on 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So uh, you would just stay in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 because that's where I'm going to be. And uh, the, the background to this is that Paul had visited the church in Corinth or had set up the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth was a very enthusiastic church and very spiritually active. Uh, so spiritually active that sometimes they go into excesses. And so 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul is correcting some of the mistakes in the church. In chapter 14, uh, prior to that, he had spoken about communion and how they ate communion. And then in chapter 14, he Chapter 12, he talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, chapter 13, he talks about love and how they should walk in love. And chapter 14, he's talking about uh, speaking in tongues and how it must be done in the church. So I'm going to focus on chapter 14. And we begin from verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries however in the spirit he speaks mysteries so Paul talks about something he calls a tongue or tongue now popularly this time we call it tongues we add an S to it, but when Paul was talking about it, uh, it was tongue uh, as a singular, but it's, it's a talking about the same, tongue. Um, that, that word uh, is in the Greek can be applied to the physical tongue we have in our mouth. It can also be applied to uh, any language you speak. So uh, English is a tongue and uh, Fanti is a tongue and uh, Every language is a tongue. Some more tongue than others, but every language is a tongue. Uh, but in the context that Paul is using the word tongue, he's not talking about a physical tongue, neither is he talking about just any language at all, like uh, any language we know. In this context, he means a special expression in an unlearned language a special or spiritual expression in an unlearned language. Sometimes it is called unknown tongue or unknown tongue. So, so this is the context in which Paul is using this word, a spiritual expression in an unlearned language. So, it's a spiritual expression, it's a language, but the language is not the normal one you know, have learned and are familiar with. So this is the Holy Spirit empowering people to be able to express a spiritual idea in a language they have not learned. So this is how Paul is using the word tongue, a spiritual expression in an unlearned language. Speaking in tongues is or should be by the Holy Spirit. It must be in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because if you read the first expression of it in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that they began to speak in tongues as the spirit gave them Utterance. So the utterance is given by the Holy Spirit, but the speaking is done by human beings. 
but the utterance, the origin of it is the Holy Spirit. The expression of it is human. So speaking in tongues must originate from the Spirit. It's very important. It must be an utterance inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now in this passage, Paul talks about speaking in tongues and he says first that the person who speaks in tongues speaks to God. Speaks to God. That, that simply means that God understands what the person is saying. So when a person is speaking in tongues, they are speaking to God. And it makes sense because if it is inspired by the Holy Spirit, then God understands what the person is saying. It is a language that God understands. However, the passage also says, apart from God who understands what the person is saying, no one understands what the person is saying. No one understands, including the speaker himself or herself. They don't understand what they are saying. And the hearers also don't understand, but God understands because they are speaking to God. So that's the first thing Paul says, that when you speak in tongues, you are speaking to God. Then secondly, he says that when people speak in tongues, they are speaking mysteries. Now that's a very important word, and I'm going to uh, explain what he meant by mysteries. Mysteries, that means that nobody understands what the person is saying. We don't understand what the person is saying. He speaks to God, God understands. At the same time, for the person who is speaking and those who are listening, it's a mystery. They don't understand. Now that word mystery is something uh, we have to uh, break down because uh, we, we need to always understand the scripture as it is meant to be understood. So it says, for no one understands him, how be it he speaks mysteries. So the question you would ask is, if the person is speaking mysteries, whom is he speaking the mysteries to? Because a mystery is something you don't understand. So, if he's speaking mysteries, is he speaking mysteries to God? Of course not. Because God understands what the person is saying. So if God understands what the person is saying, it is not a mystery to God. Something is a mystery to you only when you don't understand it. So when he says that the person who speaks in tongues speaks in mysteries, the mysteries are not mysteries to God. They are mysteries only to those who don't understand. And even in the natural, if somebody comes here from um, Afghanistan and starts to speak Afghan and starts talking Afghan up and down, very animated and, and gibbering in his language, it will be a mystery to us. Why? We don't understand. But for those who understand that language, it is not a mystery. So when the Bible says that when a person speaks in tongues, they are speaking mysteries, they are not speaking mysteries to God because God cannot be mystified by what we say. It is only a mystery to the extent that both the person speaking and those listening do not understand. So insofar as they don't understand, it is a mystery to them. I hope you're following that. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes people use speaking in tongues as a talisman. So when they pray, they feel somehow they, they are talking about some deep spiritual mysteries from somewhere. And, and somehow people think that once they can pray enough in tongues, their problems will be solved because they are dealing with mysteries. But you have to understand the context in which the word mystery has been used here. It is used because it is a mystery to the speaker and to the listeners, but not a mystery to God. 
All right. Now, Paul doesn't end there. If speaking in tongues is a mystery to us, what should we do? How do we move it from the mystery stage? So in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he answers that question. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying to cure the mystery, then you have to pray that God will help you to understand by the same Holy Spirit gifting you that what you said that you didn't understand, he will make you understand. Later on, he explains why that is so. So he says, because it's a mystery to you, you need to understand what you are praying about. All right. Now, he makes the statement, when I pray in a tongue, uh, today we will say, when I pray in tongues, now I want you to note something even before I make any further explanation. Uh, first, he talks about he that speaks in tongues. The three action words you would notice in relation to tongues. One, speaking is an action word. Then now he's talking about praying. And later on he will talk about singing. So there is a speaking in tongues. There is a praying in tongues. There is a singing in tongues. But we are focusing more on praying, not speaking, but praying. Now, when we pray in tongues, we normally call it the prayer language of the spirit. It's a language of the spirit that is expressed through us. And when a person is praying in tongues, they themselves don't un understand what they are saying. The people listening don't understand what they are saying. What they are saying is a mystery to them, is a mystery to their audience. But they are praying. It's not rubbish. It's not nonsense. It is not gibbering. Because sometimes people say, uh, speaking in tongues is nothing. It is something. According to Paul, according to the New Testament, it is prayer. What kind of prayer it is? Is it, it is praying in the spirit. So he says, when I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. My spirit prays. What does that mean? It means my spirit is actively involved in what is going on. That's why we call it the prayer language. Because my spirit is praying. And it's a glorious thing when your spirit is praying when your spirit is expressing himself if he is truly expressing himself led by the Holy Spirit then what he is saying will be right because the Holy Spirit will not lead your spirit to pray the wrong kind of prayer so Paul says when I pray in tongues my spirit praise my spirit is praying my spirit is the one who is active now when he says my spirit the my spirit there is not the holy spirit because the holy spirit is not your spirit that's god's spirit but he says when i pray in terms my spirit prays it didn't say the holy spirit prays but my spirit prays now how does that happen the holy spirit inspires my spirit to pray the spirit gave them utterance the holy spirit inspires your spirit but that prayer is not coming from the holy spirit it is coming from your spirit which is united with christ is born again now being given the language or the expression to pray through the agency of the holy spirit my spirit 
prays. My spirit is actively involved. But then he says something very troublesome. He says, when I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. But he says, my understanding is unfruitful. My mind is not engaged. So this is a kind of prayer. He says, I'm praying in tongues. My spirit is praying, but my mind is in neutral. It's in neutral gear. My mind is not doing anything beneficial. And that is why people can pray in tongues and be absent-minded. They can be absent-minded. So sometimes somebody's watching TV and praying in tongues and going around. And we do that a lot, you know. As my former senior housemaster used to say, parambulating all over the place. Walking all over the place. <laughs> You know, just walking around and praying in tongues and sometimes even in a prayer meeting people are speaking in tongues and waving to each other oh, oh how's it and, and they're talking in tongues and, and why are they doing that because their mind is at home asleep their mind is unfruitful now is it a good thing is it a good thing for you to pray, your spirit is actively praying, but your mind is unfruitful. So if, if my spirit is praying and my mind is unfruitful, it's not perfect for me. It's not good for me. Because if my spirit is praying and my mind is unfruitful, it means that faith is not activated. So that prayer I'm praying, although it's in the spirit, is not of faith. Why is it not of faith? Because faith comes by hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, and declaring the word of God. So speaking in tongues or praying in tongues, therefore, because my mind is unfruitful, will not become a prayer of faith. It is a spiritual prayer, but it is not a prayer of faith because I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm believing. I don't know what I can continue to trust God for. So if I prayed in tongues today and let's say my spirit led me to pray for somebody who lives in Kokumlimli called Akosia who is going through a marital challenge and so my spirit wants me to intercede. So I pray and I pray in tongues, yes, and I pray for Akosia and Kokumlemle, but I don't know I pray for Akosia and Kokumlemle. So the next time I'm praying, I cannot pick up that prayer topic again and pray for Akosia and Kokumlemle. And prayer has to be persistent. How can I persist in faith when I didn't know what I prayed for? Are you following what I'm saying? I know some of you are getting very nervous. You say, hey, pastor, are you saying we shouldn't pray in tongues? You, I will answer for you, you know. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm explaining how you can make praying in the spirit effective. So, faith comes by hearing. You must hear and understand and believe and declare. That is faith. If you heard and you didn't understand it, Jesus says it's like a person who heard the word of God and the birds of the air came to steal it. There will be no fruit. That's why he says my mind is unfruitful. Because I don't even know what I'm talking about. So how do we solve this problem? How when a person is praying, his spirit is praying torrents of prayer to God. But he doesn't know what he is talking about because it's mystery. How do we reconcile the two? How do we solve this problem? 
And Paul anticipated the question. And so in verse 15, he says, of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, what is the conclusion then? So he has shown us the dichotomy. When I pray in tongues, my spirit is active. My mind is not fruitful. So what should we do then? What's the conclusion? He says the conclusion is, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray also with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing also with the understanding. So two things he says I will do. I will pray with the spirit. I want you to note, I will. I will. It's a choice. Praying in the spirit is the same as praying in tongues. And we must all desire to pray in tongues. Once you get born again, you must desire that you are filled with the Holy Spirit and that you have the prayer language of the Spirit because your spirit must pray. So Paul says, I'll pray with the Spirit. And then he continues to say, I will pray with the understanding also. Now what did he mean by I will pray with the understanding also? Does it mean I'll, I'll just pray in tongues, say something in tongues, and then say something in English or say something in Fanti or say something in Chi? Is that what he's saying? That's not what he's saying. Remember, he said earlier on that when you pray in tongues, you must also pray that God gives you the ability to interpret. So what Paul is saying simply is when you pray in tongues, don't put it in neutral gear and go for three hours. But as you pray in tongues, pray, God, help me to understand what my spirit just said to you so that my understanding will be fruitful. So I can know exactly what my spirit is praying for in the spirit so I can believe. And faith can now be met with my spiritual language and that makes it a very powerful force. The practice most of us have developed over the years is what I call endurance praying in tongues. People have developed a bad habit of determining prayer or spiritual vitality by how long a person can pray with his mind unfruitful. So people go to a prayer meeting, shall we pray? You don't even know the topic. We don't know what we are praying for. We don't know the word of God we are believing. Let's pray. And then they start. And they go pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Three hours. And people come and say, ha, ah, it was powerful. Hey, today it was powerful. We went three hours nonstop. Was your mind fruitful? No. Do you know what you talked about? No. Was it a mystery? No. What did you believe God to do? I don't know. My spirit has taken care of it. Paul says, no, we have to move away from ignorance. So whilst your spirit is praying, you must pray that your mind will be, on, will be fruitful. And how do you do that? The same Holy Spirit who gives us the ability to speak, speak in tongues also has another gift called the interpretation of tongues. And if you go to him and say, you are now inspiring me to say this thing. Now help my mind to understand. He will now drop into your mind what your spirit said. Are you following me? So when that happens, you, have, you can now do what Paul says. I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. How did he get the understanding? Through the same Holy Spirit making his mind fruitful. Then the next verse. I think this is quite explanatory. Verse 16. Otherwise, if you don't pray with the spirit and pray with the understanding, he says, otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? How can anybody agree with you in prayer 
if you jabbered in tongues and they didn't know what you said, how can they say, I agree? Amen means I agree. So you prayed in tongues, yo, 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 whatever you said. And then you can even tell people, say amen. But what did they say amen to? So Paul is saying, you have blessed the person with your spirit. The person must know the blessing so he can say amen. He can say amen to it. Because the prayer that God answers is the prayer of faith. God responds to faith. Faith is not squeeze your eyes hard and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, that's not faith. That's not, that's not, that's not faith. Faith is simply God has promised it. He's a faithful God. This is what he promised. I believe what he has promised because he's a faithful God. And I rest in him and what he has promised. That he would do what he has promised. But for that to happen, I must know what God has promised. For me to even know how to walk by faith, I must know what we pray for. If we are praying a prayer of agreement, that, that's why we, when we pray, uh, you know, Sometimes one person prays, Father, we thank you for this and, and continues the prayer. And then all of, when he finished, all of us say, Amen. You know why we say Amen? We are saying that that prayer that was prayed by one person is our prayer too. So in God's presence, it's no longer one person's prayer, but it is called a corporate prayer. All of us who said Amen have agreed to that prayer. Therefore, it is our prayer also. So if, if I pray for you and I say, I pray that God will increase you more and more and expand you and you say, amen, you are saying, God, what he said is also what I'm saying. But if I said that in tongues, you wouldn't know what I said. Even if you said amen, you didn't know whether I, I was praying for somebody in Kwesimintim or I was praying for somebody in Afghanistan. You wouldn't know. So you said amen to something you don't understand. So Paul says, if, if you do that, then how can the person you are blessing or you are praying for say amen? So one of the things that everybody who has a prayer language of the spirit should have is that they must pray for the ability to understand what they, they are praying for in the spirit. And we can ask the same Holy Spirit and he will give it to us. And that is why when you pray in tongues, it's always important to keep quiet at a point. To ask the Holy Spirit to interpret back to you what you just prayed in the spirit. So your mind will not be unfruitful. Your mind will be fruitful. So from now onwards, you would know this is the burden the Holy Spirit plays on my spirit to pray about. And now I can continue praying in that same direction, believing God for the perfection of what my spirit initiated in prayer. But if all you did was just pray in tongues and think that it's a magic wand you are waving somewhere and that because you prayed in tongues, has been released yes power has been released but we have to also get into understanding it's a very powerful weapon God has given to us but ignorance will make us fall short of the expectation of the power of our prayer as we pray in the spirit so when we pray with our understanding, the basic way to pray with understanding is to read the Bible, take God's promise, and pray according to it. But you could also be that the Holy Spirit interprets back to you 
what you just prayed in the spirit. Since about 1979, that is how I've prayed. If I pray in tongues, I have to wait. I have to pause. I have to ask the Holy Spirit, what was that all about? What are you communicating to me? What are you telling me? What do you want me to continue praying about? But you don't just go like a horse that is broken free and is just galloping nonstop and think that is powerful. Now, I know that, you know, because these days there's plurality of preaching and you hear all kinds of people, you hear other preachers who say otherwise, and I, I am fine. You know, I always stick with the scripture. I don't care what anybody's experience. Somebody say, I prayed at midnight, at midnight, I prayed in tongues three hours and this happened. Fine, that's your experience, but I can't find the validity of it anywhere in scripture. And until we can ground our Christian actions in the scripture, we can easily move into error. Our actions must come grounded in the scriptures. So by all means, pray with the spirit. But also pray that your, the Holy Spirit will make your mind, give your mind understanding so you can say, with Paul, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. And then he goes ahead. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding. I will deal with singing in the spirit next week. But today, it is about praying in the spirit. But you cannot pray in the spirit if you have not received the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. If you've not received it, what people call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, or whatever term it is, it is the Holy Spirit giving you a, that spiritual language so that you can communicate to him in the way he wants you to communicate. And then the same Holy Spirit enlighten your mind so you would know where your spirit is going, what your spirit is leading you to, what your spirit wants you to focus on. Now, even after you've prayed in the spirit, you can now go searching the scriptures to now add faith to what you were praying for in the spirit. And that is the way to pray effectively, powerfully, and receive answers to your prayer. Amen. Now, we're going to pray just before. We have just a minute or two. And uh, if you are here and you say, I want to receive the prayer language of the Holy Spirit, the ability to speak in tongues, and I, I, don't, I don't do that. I want to receive that. Jesus says, ask. That's all he said. Ask the Father, he will give it to you. So we're going to stand for about two, three minutes, and we're going to pray for that. Let's rise up, everybody. Is there anybody who, who desires the prayer language of the Holy Spirit? You desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. You haven't done that before and you want God to give you that ability. Just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Don't feel shy. Lift up your hand. Okay. Now, everybody lift up your two hands, including those who lifted up their hands. Lift up your two hands. And, and just pray and say, Heavenly Father... I believe Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am your child. And I ask you, Father, give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let my spirit pray by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit and grant me the prayer language of the Holy Spirit that I can communicate to you by your spirit the way you want me to communicate and father give me understanding so that my mind will know what my spirit is saying 
I receive today the gift of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name now begin to pray begin talk to the Lord just 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 talk to the Lord some of you are going to start bursting out speaking in tongues just right away just pray just pray he's he's here and he's feeling you and he's touching you and he's working through you and he's moving through you and he's giving you his ability and he's giving you his power and he's giving you his grace and you're going to flow in the power of the Holy Spirit receive the gift 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 of the Holy Spirit receive the prayer language of the Spirit receive right now in the name of Jesus let there be a release in your spirit let there be a release in your spirit let there be a release in your spirit lift up your voice and begin to pray for those of you who have the prayer language begin to use your prayer language and pray, your la pray in the prayer language and as you pray just tell the Holy Spirit help me to know what I'm praying about give my mind understanding just pray in the prayer language Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. By your spirit. By your spirit. Let there be a release amongst your people. And I pray, Father, that you give to your people the interpretation of their prayer language. Interpretation of tongues. That they will understand what they are saying in the spirit. That their minds will be fruitful. Take us beyond just the spirit into faith. So we walk in the spirit and we walk by faith. Let there be a release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Over God's people. Over this house. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise Lord for answered prayer. Let us celebrate the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. Oh, give it to the Lord. Just honor him. <laughs> next, next week, we'll have a longer time praying and practicing what we are learning. And you'll be amazed how God is going to lead you. you your prayer life is going to be transformed. And you will just move from just speaking in tongues in prayer to now getting understanding of what you are praying about and having faith. To believe God for what your spirit is inspiring through uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen.